All right, so I have a bit of a comparison video here. This is going to be relatively short. So I'm only going to look at benchmarks. I'm not going to run any applications in this particular video. Maybe in my full review, I will do an application versus application comparison. So on the right, we have the KB Lake i5 7Y54. So that has a maximum turbo of 3.2 gigahertz, which is quite a lot higher than the Mi Notebook Air the 2016 model, which is the, of course, the 12.5 inch model we're talking about here. This has a maximum turbo of 2.2 gigahertz, and that is the Skylake. So in this video, I wanna have a look at the differences in synthetic benchmarks here, the performance between the two. But straight away, a little bit of a spoiler, and it's pretty obvious here that this model here, the Core i5 named version, which is basically almost like a, a Core M3, of course, it's just higher clocked does feel so much quicker with short bursts, loading applications, moving around windows. It really does feel like the i5-7200 model. So the base clocks between these two models, there's also quite a big difference here. There's 300 megahertz of difference. So on the 2016 model, we've only got 900 megahertz. This is the base clock speed. And then we have 1.2 on the 2017 model. There's also a difference in RAM. This has four gigabytes of RAM and there is no eight gigabyte option. So this one here has eight gigabytes. 2017, Xiaomi at least gave us that option. We now have eight gigabytes, which I feel should really be the minimum, at least in 2017. So if I look now at Geekbench 4 benchmarks, on both of these, you'll see there is quite a big difference here almost a thousand points more on the single core score, of course, because this does clock up to 3.2 gigahertz, as I mentioned. So that really makes a big difference. And what impressed me with the score of the 5Y7 on the right, you'll see that this got actually a higher score single core than my i5-7200 model. So 3,814, very good score there. The multi-core score is a little bit lower. now. It really does feel faster because it's just the short bursts because once the power limits kick in, it cannot hold that 3.2 gigahertz for very long. And then you'll see on the 2016 model, which you could say is the original model here, it gets quite a bit uh, slower there, quite a bit of a lower score, sorry. And then the open CL score, so this is using the GPU, that Intel integrated graphics here. Again, quite a large difference here between both of these systems, aided by the fact that the unit on the right, of course, has double the RAM. Then the pass mark score, now this is a little bit harder to read here, sorry. The pass mark score rating on the 2017 model with the 7Y54 is 2,224. And then on the 2016 model with the Skylake 6Y30 Core M3 is 1,790. Eight. So big difference again with these synthetic benchmark scores. Okay, so that's all I'm going to show in this video because I am working towards my full review of the 2017 model higher spec KB Lake 7Y54 with 8 gigabytes review. So that hopefully will be out next week. Probably need about uh, three or four days just to wrap things up, some more testing and whatnot. But as you can see here, that it is, at least in synthetic benchmarks, just a lot faster and really is impressing me with the speeds we're getting out of this. You have to remember it is fanless. We are getting the Core i5 performance, but only for short bursts. So long term, if you're doing like video encoding, you're using Adobe Premiere Pro or something like that, then really it doesn't work out to be too much faster, this CPU, even though it does turbo up to 3.2 gigahertz. It's not really that much faster than the 7Y30 with those kind of tasks. It's just getting around Windows where it really seems to feel a lot faster there. So I will be back with a review of this one and there will probably be a couple more comparisons compared to my older four gigabyte 6Y30 model here. But as a fantastic laptop here, I really do like it. And as a lot of you probably know from the channel that I've been using this model here for one year, it has been my travel sturdy little workhorse and now with the extra four gigabytes on the new model it's probably at this stage going to be my replacement for this one here because i'm really loving the uh, performance for short bursts at least on that model there
Thank you so much for watching this video and I do hope to see you back with the full review of the 2017 Mi Notebook Air 12.5 model.